I would like to thank Professor Van de Sosa and the other organizers for inviting me to give this keynote lecture on deep brain stimulation as a network modulation tool in neurology and psychiatry. Deep brain stimulation involves um, surgical implantation of electrodes um, such as these, usually bilaterally in a, a brain um, target area, uh, which are then connected via cables under the skin to an impulse generating uh, device such as this placed in the chest um, cavity. And the voltage, um, the frequency, the pulse width and um, um, polarity of stimulation um, can also be controlled with um, devices such as this. And the stimulators can also be switched on and um, off, um, which uh, is something that's used in research studies. It shows the widening application of um, DBS as a treatment for, to a, for a range of neurological and um, psychiatric um, disorders. Um, in um, movement disorders um, such as Parkinson's disease, essential trauma and dystonia, uh, DBS is considered standard of care. And for other neurological and um, psychiatric disorders, uh, DBS is considered more or less experimental with um, preclinical phase one, phase two, phase three trials um, in progress. The other important point from this slide is that uh, although uh, we talk about um, DBS of a specific target, in fact, um, the rationale for DBS is based on um, postulated circuit dysfunction in each of these disorders um, uh, and uh, stimulation of a pathophysiological circuit, which in the case of Parkinson's disease is the motor circuit, and in the case of obsessive compulsive disorder is the motor and limbic frontostriatal circuits. Um, the same disorders such as Parkinson's disease can be uh, treated with different targets such as uh, the subthalamic nucleus and the internal segment of the globus pallidus. And different disorders can also be treated with um, DBS of the um, same target. So uh, subthalamic nuclear stimulation for both Parkinson's disease as well as um, obsessive, obsessive compulsive disorder. Yes. Now in my um, lecture, I'm going to talk about DBS um, of the subthalamic nucleus in Parkinson's disease, uh, focusing mainly on the cognitive and behavioral effects. And um, in the last part on about DBS in obsessive compulsive disorder or OCD, um, focusing on the clinical effects. Now, SDN DBS for Parkinson's disease. For those of you who may not be familiar with it, uh, Parkinson's disease is a movement disorder due to loss of dopamine producing cells in the substantial Niagara parts compactor of the basal ganglia. The motor symptoms are um, tremor, rigidity, and bradykinesia or slowness of movement. Cognitive deficits include executive dysfunction, which is a um, uh, problems with uh, planning and problem solving. And in the later stages of the illness, a proportion of cases also may become demented. Um, psychiatric symptoms include depression, anxiety, apathy, hallucinations, delusions, and medication in, induced uh, impulse control disorders that um, can uh, uh, occur in a proportion of cases as well. Medical treatment um, is with levodopa and other dopaminergic medication to replace lost dopamine, uh, which uh, this medication is very effective in controlling the motor symptoms um, for five or more years. But um, uh, medication-related side effects such as dyskinesias, these are involuntary movements, and on-off motor fluctuations can develop, um, which can be quite disabling. And it's at this point when these um, side effects of medication develop that people are considered to be um, candidates uh, for DBS surgery.
This slide shows some of the frontostriatal circuits that are implicated in different um, symptoms of Parkinson's disease. And the rationale for um, SDN-DBS is um, based on uh, dysfunction of this uh, motor circuit between um, the um, SMA motor um, cortex and the putamen, uh, which is considered to mediate bradykinesia or slowness of movement in Parkinson's disease. In Parkinson's disease, the subthalamic nucleus and the internal segment of the globus pallidus are hyperactive, which um, alters the pattern of activity in um, the direct and indirect pathways of the basal ganglia, and the net result of which is excessive inhibitory outflow from the basal ganglia to the thalamus um, and uh, underactivation of cortical areas. Now, um, with um, electrical stimulation of these targets, the subthalamic nucleus or the GPI, um, these um, um, excessive inhibitory outflow is reduced uh, to the thalamus and there is some normalization of cortical activation to some extent, um, which improves the motor symptoms of um, Parkinson's disease. This um, has been shown to be um, effective in uh, randomized control trials from Germany, from the US, and in the UK um, to significantly improve the motor symptoms of Parkinson's disease as well as quality of life. And um, these photos show the uh, first patient operated in the functional neurosurgery unit in London um, who had the classical symptoms of Parkinson's disease preoperatively, tremor, rigidity, and um, um, motor slowness. And uh, following um, surgery, you wouldn't know that he had Parkinson's disease because his motor symptoms had significantly improved. Um, now, uh, at our center, um, Harit Akram used preoperative high resolution diffusion um, imaging in 20 patients and probabilistic tractography to examine the connectivity patterns uh, associated with um, clinical efficacy and um, postoperative MRIs to um, uh, calculate the volume of tissue activated with the uh, um, active um, uh, contacts of the electrodes. Um, this uh, study produced two main uh, interesting findings. And uh, while I, uh, all patients had their um, um, electrodes um, accurately um, located in the dorsolateral uh, motor section of the subthalamic nucleus, um, there were some um, differences um, in terms of um, the sweet spot for um, uh, active contacts. Active contacts that were in the mean medial and posterior uh, part of the SCN um, were particularly effective in improving rigidity as well as bradykinesia, whereas um, tremor was um, uh, improved by more centrally uh, located um, active contacts. The tractography showed that uh, rigidity uh, as well as bradykinesia were significantly improved by um, um, connectivity uh, of the active contacts um, with um, the supplementary uh, motor area, whereas a tremor was um, significantly improved um, uh, by connectivity to uh, the motor cortex, connectivity of the um, active contacts to um, the motor cortex. Um, so um, sh this study shows that stimulation does not produce just local effects, uh, but also distant um, effects um, in um, cortical areas. Now, this is all I'm going to really say about the clinical um, effects of most of the work that I'm going to be uh, talking about um, from our own group um, was motivated by this review by Marsland and Obeso, the paradox of um, surgery uh, review. In this, they um, asked the question, why doesn't stereotactic surgery for Parkinson's disease, which relieves the motor symptoms, but also disrupts the outflow from the basic ganglia to the cortex um, and um, subcortically, why doesn't it produce any major cognitive or motor deficits? Uh, 
they went on to um, review the evidence and um, suggested that perhaps while um, routine uh, behaviors and movements would not be affected by surgery, non-routine behaviors um, would be uh, disrupted by um, the deep brain stimulation. Um, so, to operationalize um, Marsden and Obeso's non-routine behaviors that may be disrupted by SCNDBS, um, we first considered um, the normal functions of the subthalamic uh, nucleus. The subthalamic nucleus, as part of the indirect pathway of the uh, basic ganglia, may be involved in um, suppressing um, competing or um, competing uh, responses to allow a selection of the uh, appropriate response by the direct pathway. Uh, it's also po uh, possible that the STN plays a role in prepotent um, suppression of prepotent responses. A prepotent response is one um, uh, such as the one shown by the red arrow here, um, which reaches a threshold for activation more quickly than an alternative response shown in blue here. And with such uh, prepotent or habitual or automatic responses that tend to be prepotent as well, um, uh, if they're unwanted, the priority, of course, is to stop them from being executed. And um, the subthalamic nucleus, which uh, via the hyperdirect pathway, receives input from many cortical areas, including the PSMA, the anterior cingulate cortex, the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, the inferior frontal cortex, the orbitofrontal cortex, areas that are known to be involved in inhibitory control, may uh, play a role in suppressing such um, prepotent responses. And uh, according to the go no go model of uh, Michael Frank, um, the normal function of the subthalamic nucleus um, is to um, um, is increase the decision threshold when making decisions under conflict to uh, prevent premature responses and to provide time for reflection and accumulation of um, further information before a decision is made, and that SCNDBS may interfere with this hold your horses um, uh, function of the SCN and this raising of response um, thresholds and may as a result result um, produce premature uh, and impulsive um, uh, responding. So the main predictions um, guiding our work was that in uh, PD, uh, STN-DBS would influence a um, set of interrelated uh, processes uh, relating to um, executive control of action and specifically response selection on the conflict, inhibition of prepotent responses, and modulation of response thresholds and speed accuracy um, trade-offs. Now, to provide you with the evidence, this um, slide taken uh, from a meta-analysis by Parsons shows that SCN-DBS produces its beneficial effects on the motor symptoms of Parkinson's disease without having any major um, side effects on cognitive function. And um, the main um, side effect on cognition is a reduction of verbal fluency, both phonemic fluency, which is uh, generating words beginning with particular letters such as F uh, or A or S, um, and uh, semantic fluency, which is generating words beginning belonging to a specific um, semantic category such as animals. Um, Verbal fluency um, is a task that um, requires search of associative semantic uh, networks and um, selection of um, uh, words or responses that meet the criteria for the task, uh, so uh, starting with a particular letter or belonging to a particular semantic category and um, against competing responses that do not um, uh, meet the criteria. So it involves response selection under um, competition um, 
<clears throat> as well as other processes. Um, with Alam Anzac, we recorded local field potentials from the subdynamic nucleus and during performance of either a semantic or a phonemic verbal fluency task uh, or a control word repetition task. Um, you know, this, this, the words generated by the patients were tape recorded and played back to them and they just repeated the words to control for the verbal output involved in verbal fluency. Um, this recording uh, from the implanted electrodes in the subthalamic nucleus is possible in the immediate post-operative phase before the um, electrodes are connected uh, to the impulse generating device. And um, the results showed that both, for both fluency tasks, there was a significant increase in gamma band activity in a wide gamma band range of 30 to uh, about 90 hertz. Uh, <clears throat> and that this uh, left STN changes in gamma power correlated not only with the number of words generated, um, but also a measure of switching during uh, both verbal fluency tasks. This measure of switching is um, the ability to, for example, switch from one subcategory um, to another. So when generating animals, for example, uh, producing uh, farm animals first and then switching to wild animals and then switching to um, birds, etc. And um, this is consistent with um, uh, neuropsychological uh, results showing that um, uh, not only um, uh, the number of words generated, but also this measure of switching, which is a frontal function, is um, declined uh, with deep brain stimulation surgery, with STN-DBS surgery. Um, so this study shows that there is activity in the subthalamic nucleus itself is being modulated during performance of this um, verbal fluency tasks. Uh, Schroeder and colleagues um, looked at the effects of SDN-DBS on phonemic verbal fluency in an imaging study. Um, with the stimulators on and the um, number of words generated were significantly lower than when the stimulators were uh, off. And they found that this reduction of uh, verbal fluency with stimulation was uh, related to um, uh, reduced activity in the um, right orbital frontal cortex and the left inferior frontal gyrus and the left temporal um, gyrus, left inferior temporal gyrus, um, suggesting that uh, turning the stimulator as on um, was affecting um, the activity of a frontotemporal um, uh, network that is known from in previous imaging studies to be involved in the verbal fluency task. Now, um, the Stroop task I'm sure most of you are familiar with. In the control task, patients name the color of uh, ink of color rectangles as fast as they can. And in the Stroop interference task, they have to name the color of ink of um, uh, color words, uh, such as red, blue, green, that are printed in incongruent ink. So um, the word red printed in blue and so on. And to um, uh, be able to do this um, response selection on the conflict um, involved in the Stroop interference task, um, patients have to suppress the more habitual and prepotent response of reading uh, the word. Uh, reading is a habitual prepotent response um, built up over years of experience with words. And uh, to be able to engage in uh, controlled response um, of naming the color of ink. So in this case, um, in, um, saying uh, blue and not reading the word red. Um, and uh, as part of the first study that we did with um, patients with uh, bilateral uh, SDN-DBS who were brought to London by um, Patricia Limousin um, for assessment uh, who had been operated in Grenoble. Um, the, we found that when the stimulators were on, the patients were significantly faster um, on the control uh, task of the Stroop relative to when the stimulators were off. 
but uh, on the Stroop interference um, task, they made significantly more errors when the stimulators were on compared to uh, when the stimulators were off, suggesting that they were less able to um, uh, suppress this habitual prepotent response of reading the words during the Stroop interference task um, to be able to name the color of ink. I think this was the first evidence in humans um, of um, inhibitory deficits produced by um, uh, STN-DBS um, <clears throat> and has, this uh, has been replicated by um, other centers. Schroeder and colleagues did a second um, study with the Stroop uh, imaging study uh, looking at the effects of SCN DBS on the Stroop um, and they uh, showed that this increased Stroop interference effect and um, the difference between the Stroop task and the control task was greater with stimulators on than when stimulators were off and this was associated this uh, in, um, with significant reduction of activity in the ventral stripe the anterior cingulate cortex, um, so components of the limbic circuit, but increased um, activation of the left angular gyrus. This is an area that is um, relate, relates activation of which relates to uh, processing of words um, and perhaps suggesting that um, with stimulation on, there was a loss of control of the limbic circuit over the left angular gyrus resulting in reading the words instead of naming the color of ink uh, of the words on the Stroop interference task. Now, another task that requires um, response selection on the conflict is the uh, random number generation. This task is procedurally simple. Um, it uh, requires generating words, to, uh, generating numbers between one and nine um, in a random fashion um, in uh, synchrony with the pacing stimulus. And the analogy of picking out numbers out of a hat is uh, um, used to explain the concept of random. To be able to engage in this task, um, patients have to suppress the habitual response of counting, and counting again is a habitual <clears throat> response built up through years of experience with numbers, and um, they have to engage in response selection on their conflict because on every single trial there are nine possible uh, re competing res responses or numbers to select from, and they have to engage in this response selection on the competition on every trial as well as a host of other um, executive processes. Uh, I, uh, in a second study with Anam Anzac, we recorded local field potentials from the electrodes uh, implanted um, bilaterally in the subthalamic nucleus um, during performance of a random number generation task for six trials or a control counting task where patients just counted from one to nine uh, over and over again and found that performance of the random number generation task um, relative to counting was associated with increase of gamma band activity uh, in 45 to 65 hertz range um, and that this um, STN local field potential changes in um, gamma band correlated uh, with two measures of randomness. Um, the count score one measure um, um, which is a measure of how much um, people engage in habitual counting, either one, two, three, four, or nine, eight, seven, forwards or backwards during random number generation. They, so it measures the, um, how well they're able to suppress habitual counting during random number generation and um, negatively correlated with this and positively correlated um, with repeated pairs, this ability to uh, repeat the same number on successive trials, which is the measure of control processing because people engage in it when there is sufficient time to um, engage in this process. So suggesting that STN local field potential changes in the gamma band um, when they were high, there was a less uh, habitual counting um, during random number generation. <clears throat> 
So showing that uh, activity within the subthalamic nucleus itself is being modulated during performance of this uh, task that requires subtraction of habitual counting and strategic response selection on the company. Stefan Pogua, when he was visiting us in London, we <clears throat> carried out an imaging study of um, um, STN if DBS effects on random number generation. Patients perform either the random number generation task or a control count counting task with the stimulators um, switched on or off um, during scanning. Um, STN stimulation improved the motor symptoms of Parkinson's disease, um, but when the stimulators were switched on, there was significant increase in this measure of um, habitual counting counts go one uh, during random number generation. So uh, the patient's output was less random when the stimulators were on compared to when the stimulators were off. And this um, increase in habitual uh, counting and inability to suppress habitual counting um, and reduce randomness uh, with the stimulators on was associated with decreased activation in the uh, left dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex, the anterior cingulate, the posterior cingulate, and an increase in activation in the right GPI. There was also a negative correlation between this measure of habitual counting during a random number generation and activation in the left anterior cingulate, the left inferior frontal gyrus, and the left posterior cingulate, suggesting that when acti uh, activation in these areas was reduced when the stimulators were switched on, then uh, this um, measure of habitual counting during random number generation also increased. Uh, using the right GPI as the seed, um, uh, Stefan also looked at psychophysiological interactions, um, which showed that with STN DBS on, there was negative coupling um, with um, between the right GPI and the inferior frontal gyrus and um, the uh, and anterior cingulate cortex with the stimulators on uh, relative to when the stimulators uh, were off, um, suggesting that um, the switching the stimulators on was altering um, palatal um, <coughs> coupling with the anterior cingulate and the inferior frontal cortex. Um, so again, evidence that um, STN DBS, while it's affecting um, not just the subthalamic nucleus itself, uh, but also um, activation of um, the cortical areas uh, such as the anterior cingulate, the inferior frontal gyrus, and the dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex during performance of this task that involved response selection on the conflict and suppression of habitual counting during random number generation. Another task that requires suppression of um, um, prepotent responses is a stop signal task. In the conditional version, um, patients um, are instructed to stop responding when the stop um, signal, for example, a red cross is presented following an arrow point to the, to the left. But when the stop signal is presented uh, following an arrow pointing to the right, they're, um, uh, they're instructed to ignore the stop signal and to respond anyway. So um, the stopping is conditional. Um, using this task, Aaron and colleagues have shown that um, uh, stopping on this um, successful uh, stopping uh, on this task is associated with significant activation of a right hemispheric network um, of um, left SCN, um, I'm sorry, the right SCN, right um, inferior frontal gyrus, and the right PSMA. Uh, and that activity in the um, right um, STN and the uh, right inferior frontal gyrus was negatively correlated with this measure of um, success in uh, speed of stopping stop signal reaction time, suggesting that the greater the activation in the uh, subthalamic nucleus and the inferior frontal gyrus, the quicker um, individuals, healthy individuals stopped.
Now, using the same task, Ignacio Beso, as part of his PhD, um, uh, examined um, uh, stop signal reaction times with stimulators on and off uh, relative to healthy controls and found that with the stimulators on, patients were uh, significantly slower in stopping on this task. The stop signal reaction time was delayed and so was significantly longer with stimulation on compared to stimulation off and relative to healthy controls. Um, now, <clears throat> suggesting that STN stimulation is delaying motor inhibition. Um, this such delayed motor inhibition tends to be um, characteristic of impulsive individuals who tend to um, respond fast but um, are slow to inhibit their responses. So STN stimulation was making uh, patients uh, more similar impulsive. With Manuel Alegre and um, Ignacio Obeso, we recorded local free potentials from the subthalamic nucleus during performance of a um, stop uh, signal task in the immediate post-operative um, phase in uh, patients. And uh, the results showed that um, the successful um, inhibition of the response on the stop signal task was associated with lower gamma band activity um, um, when the patients um, were tested on medication and this uh, lower uh, in of gamma band activity during successful inhibition was absent in the four patients who had um, uh, impulse control disorders preoperatively relative to the patients who did not have impulse control disorders. There was also a, a shorter and smaller uh, beta band activity during successful inhibition um, trials. So again, evidence that the uh, activity in the subthalamic nucleus, nucleus itself is being modulated um, during um, successful um, inhibition in this top signal. A recent study by Lofredi from the Berlin group has shown that right STN connectivity with the PSMA and the inferior frontal gyrus predicts stopping times. Patients with Parkinson's disease perform visually cued initiation and um, termination movements um, of continuous rotational movements with STN DBS on or off, and subthalamic stimulation significantly increased stop times similar to the findings from our study by Ignacio Beso, and this increase in um, stopping times uh, correlated with the connectivity of the subthalamic nucleus um, uh, to the, to the pre-supplementary pre motor area and the inferior frontal gyrus of the right hemisphere, which is in line with the imaging findings of uh, Aaron and colleagues um, that I um, showed you on a previous uh, slide. The speed accuracy trade-off has been related to the rate of information accumulation and responses reaching a threshold for activation with um, low thresholds um, resulting in risky and fast and errorful responses, um, while higher thresholds um, being safe, slow and accurate. Risky and fast um, responses and airful responses are characteristic of impulsive individuals. Um, tasks that involve the speed accuracy trade-off um, have been shown to um, activate the PSMA, the coded putamen junction, as well as the um, subthalamic nucleus. And um, so um, evidence um, that the subthalamic nucleus is involved in setting response thresholds and modulating uh, speed accuracy trade-offs.
examine the effect of SCN-DBS on speed accuracy trade-offs. Uh, Ines Port, as part of her uh, MSc project, um, re um, looked at a moving dots task, um, uh, which was performed either uh, on the speed uh, or accuracy instructions. This is a perceptual decision-making task on which patients have to uh, decide if a uh, cloud of dots are moving to the left or right, and they performed um, the task twice with the STN-DBS um, stimulators on or uh, off, and the healthy controls um, performed the task um, twice as well, um, and they were age matched with the uh, patients. Um, with SDN-DBS on, patients had a faster reaction times. Um, uh, under speed instructions particularly, um, but made significantly more errors uh, under, uh, particularly under speed instructions. Um, and uh, application of the diff diffusion model uh, showed that um, the um, speed instructions when acting um, under uh, time pressure, the response threshold was significantly lower with STN stimulation than with um, DBS um, off, which is consistent with the model of STN being involved in threshold setting and speed um, modulating speed accuracy um, trade-offs. So with uh, STN stimulation on under speed instructions, um, which creates time pressure, patients uh, acted faster but made more errors, which is characteristic of impulsive individuals. There is also um, evidence for the role of the STN in um, inhibitory um, control from the work of Michael Frank and colleagues uh, on um, decision making under conflict. Um, the uh, study by Frank showed that um, when um, in a probabilistic decision making task, uh, when faced with high conflict stimuli with equally high probability of reward, um, early um, patients as well as uh, unoperated patients with Parkinson's disease tested both on and off medication. Um, and uh, the patients with um, um, surgery, um, when the stimulators were off, slowed down the reaction times when faced with um, decision conflict, whereas the patients with the stimulators on had significantly faster uh, reaction times in the high conflict situation um, uh, than and the low conflict situation, and this was true for both um, um, the correct trials as well as the error trials. Um, in a, a later study from the same group, Kavanaugh showed that um, the increase in theta band um, activity over the uh, medial uh, uh, prefrontal cortex is associated uh, with raising the decision threshold for high uh, conflict trials, but not low conflict trials, and that um, SCNDBS reversed this relationship. Um, that is, um, so that increased theta was associated with a decrease of the decision threshold on high conflict trials, uh, but not um, low conflict trials. Um, so SDN DBS interfered with the normal ability of the um, subthalamic nucleus to react to decision conflict by modulating the decision threshold, um, similar um, uh, to um, uh, the study by uh, uh, in our group by Pope. Impulsivity is uh, multidimensional, and what I, the evidence that I've uh, shown you uh, up to now, um, has focused on impulsive action, um, delayed motor inhibition, as well as reflection impulsivity, the responding too fast without taking time for reflection and evidence accumulation. Um, other aspects of um, impulsivity, other dimensions of impulsivity, may also be affected by SDNDBS. And um, I will uh, tell you next about a study um, that has looked at these various dimensions of um, impulsivity. To assess the role of um, SCNDBS in various components of impulsivity, um, Mosley and colleagues recently um, 
<clears throat> looked at uh, used diffusion weighted imaging and uh, tractography to identify the connectivity patterns of different uh, components of uh, post-DBS impulsivity. Uh, based on uh, um, previous studies, they defined a reward evaluation network and a response inhibition network that um, they had uh, considered to be relevant to impulsivity. And then they assess different dimensions of impulsivity um, and uh, looked at their patterns of connectivity. They found that um, trait impulsivity on the uh, Barrett impulsivity scale uh, was related to connectivity with the left um, SMA and um, the inferior frontal, the right inferior frontal gyrus, which are components of the motor inhibition network um, identified by Aaron and colleagues. Um, excluded um, the fluency task, um, the rule violations on this task were strongly associated with connectivity with the ventromedial prefrontal cortex. Delay discounting, uh, which is the uh, uh, inability in um, impulsive individuals to delay gratification uh, and to defer small rewards and wait for larger rewards, uh, was uh, associated with um, connectivity of the left and right ventral tegmental area. And uh, BET score, um, uh, which is a measure of risk taking on a, a, a casino gambling task, was um, strongly associated with um, connectivity with the orbitofrontal cortex. So um, this uh, study provided evidence that SDN-DBS affects different components of impulsivity through its effects on um, distant um, networks involved in uh, inhibition and um, reward uh, processing. For those of you who may be interested um, in this uh, literature on the effects of SDN-DBS um, on inhibitory control and um, <clears throat> resulting in impulsivity, um, we have uh, written several uh, reviews um, that you may be interested in um, looking at. Now, do these um, cognitive and behavioral effects of SDN-DBS uh, that I've shown you in Parkinson's disease, do they have any clinical uh, implications uh, for the patients? Um, there is evidence that um, SDN-DBS can produce psychiatric side effects um, in the uh, immediate um, post-surgery phase, um, transient effects such as confusion, hypomania, and hallucinations can occur. Um, and in the longer term, um, patients can become depressed. There have been uh, reports of um, cases of suicide, although rare, um, anxiety, um, apathy, and impulse control disorders um, can also occur. Um, now, the cognitive and behavioral effects um, that I've shown you could um, contribute to development of uh, new cases of impulse control disorders, um, and this increased impulsivity induced by SCNDBS may also um, contribute to suicide, um, in which uh, impulsivity is a component. Uh, with impulse control disorders, there's evidence that um, SDN-DBS can improve uh, pre-existing impulse control disorders, but there's also evidence from other studies that these um, new cases of impulse control disorders uh, can develop following surgery. And um, this um, type of connectivity analysis uh, in future may be able to identify uh, cases that are at risk of developing such impulse control disorders um, or uh, be at risk of suicide following um, surgery. Now to move on to uh, the second part of this lecture uh, on DBS for obsessive compulsive um, disorder. Uh, for those of you who may not uh, be familiar uh, with it, uh, obsessions are recurring, intrusive, unwanted thoughts or images. Um, compulsions are repetitive behaviors uh, driven by anxiety, doubt, uh, or ex exaggerated perceptions of danger. Um, different subtypes of OCD um, uh, re relating to checking, washing, uh, concerned with symmetry uh, or order, 
hoarding, um, as well as obsessive uh, obsessional primary slowness um, exists. And in the classical model, obsessions give rise to anxiety, which uh, result in the compulsions, the rituals, the habits being um, performed, which relieves this anxiety um, until such time that the cycle repeats itself. Now, these are the brain circuits that have been implicated in uh, obsessive uh, compulsive disorder, particularly the rat lateral orbital frontal cortex, um, where there is hyperactivity, as well as the anterior cingulate and the limbic circuit um, that are, have been Im implicated by imaging studies in um, the pathophysiology of OCD. Um, the, motor circuit between the SMA and the striate, the putamen, undoubtedly plays um, a role in um, <clears throat> the compulsion um, because this is the uh, so-called habit circuit uh, of the brain. So the circuits implicated in uh, OCD. Standard treatments for OCD include antidepressants, anxiolytics, uh, cognitive behavior therapy, including exposure and response prevention methods. Um, and patients usually go uh, through um, multiple uh, courses of these. But um, despite this, about 10% of uh, OCD patients uh, are treatment refractory. And uh, it is in these cases that um, DBS um, surgery is considered um, an uh, option. First um, use of uh, DBS as a treatment for OCD was, was by Nutan and colleagues um, using the anterior limb of the internal capsule uh, as the target um, and um, in four cases. And since then, there have been um, many other targets that have been used um, to treat um, uh, obsessive compulsive disorders. There have been um, seven randomized controlled trials of uh, DBS for OCD uh, with various targets, the ventral capsule, ventral striatum, the anterior limb of the internal capsule, subthalamic nucleus, the bed nucleus of striate terminalis, and the study by Kiagi and colleagues that uh, used the combination of targets, the ventral capsule, ventral striatum, and the anterior medial um, subthalamic um, nucleus at our center. Um, and I will um, tell you a little bit about the results of this uh, study by uh, Tiagi and colleagues um, at our um, center. The study by Tiagi uh, at our center had three main aims. Given that previously the ventral capsule and the anterior medial STN had been shown to be um, effective in controlling the symptoms of OCD, the first aim was to determine whether one target was superior to the other. Second aim was to determine the precise neuroanatomical locations of the optimal effects by calculating the ventral, uh, the volume of tissue activated at each site. And um, finally, to test the hypothesis that um, the two targets um, achieve their effects uh, through different processes and uh, neurocircuitry. Um, uh, Himanshu Tiagi and Aileen Joyce, the professor of neuro psychiatry, uh, recruited um, six patients um, with uh, disabling OCD uh, aged between 37 and 62 uh, who had had um, a long duration of illness ranging from uh, 20 to 30 years. Um, they, one patient was living in an inpatient unit um, uh, two patients had extreme avoidance and impaired social function. Um, three patients were largely housebound and uh, required help um, with activities of daily living. So they all had very disabling um, um, OCD and um, had uh, were treatment refractory, had had multiple treatments with medication and um, cognitive behavior therapy without improvement in their OCD symptoms.
um, this is the trial uh, design. There was a double blind randomized uh, crossover um, designed in the first uh, two phases. Um, three patients um, got the ventral capsule, ventral striatum, um, stimulate target stimulation, um, and um, then crossed over to the other uh, SDN target. And um, the other three patients started with the SDN target for 12 weeks and then crossed over to the ventral capsule, ventral striatum. Um, target for the remain for another 12 weeks. This was followed by 12 weeks of um, stimulation of both targets, followed by an um, optimization um, of um, parameters, uh, followed by six months of um, optimum DBS um, at the sites with and the settings. Um, and in the last 12 weeks, um, the pa patients also received uh, cognitive behavior um, therapy as in patients. In terms of the results of the Tiagi um, et al. study, um, the results on the Y box are shown for each of the six phases of the trial for each of the six, uh, six patients, and uh, the group data um, are shown at the bottom. Um, on the white box, which is the standard uh, rating scale for uh, OCD, relative to baseline, there was significant improvement with both um, the STN as well as the ventral capsule stimulation. And um, the, the difference between the two targets were not significant. So they uh, both um, uh, improved the OCD symptoms. In terms of uh, depressed mood, relative to baseline, there was again significant improvement with both targets, the SDN as well as the ventral um, capsule, ventral striatum, um, um, improved depressed mood, but the extent to which depression was improved was significantly greater with the ventral capsule stimulation than the SCN stimulation. Um, with the measure of um, cognitive um, inflexibility, the uh, extra dimensional set shifting um, errors on the CANTAP battery um, relative to baseline, um, this measure of cognitive flexibility was uh, reduced, so it, cognitive flexibility was improved with the STN stimulation, um, but um, there was no significant um, change um, uh, relative to baseline um, for the ventral capsule stimulation and the uh, improvement in cognitive flexibility with the STN um, target was significantly greater than the uh, change with um, the ventral capsule stimulation. So the results show that while both um, the ventral capsule and the STN targets significantly improved the uh, symptoms of uh, OCD, um, the, this was achieved during uh, with dif through different processes. Um, the ventral capsule stimulation improved depression significantly more than the STN uh, stimulation, whereas the STN stimulation, but not the ventral capsule stimulation, uh, significantly uh, improved cognitive flexibility. Um, uh, <clears throat> The average uh, ventral capsule, ventral striatal the, um, volume of tissue activated was centered on the um, white matter in the ventral portion of the anterior uh, limb uh, of the internal capsule and encroached slightly um, on the adjacent portions of the nucleus accumbens and um, the head of caudate, as well as the globus pallidus and the putamen. And the average uh, anterior medial uh, SDN um, uh, volume of tissue activated was centered on the anterior inferior medial border of the SDN, spreading into the ventral tegmental area. And this uh, work was done by um, Harit Akram. Um, Tracheography um, from optimally activated electrode contacts at each site um, suggested that these dissociated 
cognitive and mood effects reflected uh, DBS modulation of distinct brain networks. With anterior me medial SCN um, as target, uh, the average uh, volume of tissue activated were connected to the uh, lateral orbitofrontal cortex, uh, the dorsal anterior cingulate uh, cortex, the uh, dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex, and uh, the medial forebrain uh, bundle. The average VTAs um, uh, for the um, ventral capsule um, target were connected to the um, medial uh, orbitofrontal cortex, the mediodorsal um, nucleus of the thalamus, the amygdala via the amygdala um, uh, fugal pathway, the hypothalamus, and the habenula via the habenulo interopeduncular tract. So while both um, uh, ventral capsule and anterior medial STN DBS were effective in alleviating the OCD symptoms, this was achieved by modulating distinct um, processes and distinct um, brain um, networks. Now, this table taken from Andrea Horn. Uh, Andreas Horn shows that the connectomic uh, DBS has arrived, and uh, these five studies um, have looked at tract or used tractography to look at um, connectivity of um, various targets, mainly the anterior limb of an internal capsule, um, to uh, see how they um, uh, predict um, the clinical outcome in OCD. I will tell you a little bit about the study by Lee and colleagues um, on which because it has this larger sample size and it used um, some of the data from um, our um, center. Um, in this um, study they analyzed data uh, from um, four different cohorts um, from Cologne, Grenoble, Madrid, and London Institute of Neurology on 50 patients with either anterior limb of the internal capsule nucleus accumbens, uh, DBS, or anterior medial um, STN DBS um, stimulation. Um, and uh, using tractography and fiber filtering, a single um, bundle uh, connecting the dorsal anterior cingulate and the ventrolateral prefrontal cortex to the anterior medial um, STN was identified, which is shown in um, red here, um, uh, which predicted the clinical benefit of DBS for both targets. Anatomically, this bundle um, is part of uh, is uh, part of the anterior limb of the internal capsule that connects the prefrontal cortex to the STN and the mediodorsal nucleus of the thalamus and may functionally be a hyperdirect prefrontal input um, to uh, the STN and midbrain structures. Um, after calculating um, the tract on either cohort alone, um, for example, STN, it could be used to cost predict clinical improvement in the other um, cohort respectively. And in addition, the Clinical outcomes in two independent test cohorts from other centers were also predicted based on the simulation overlap with this tract. These results are indicate that a single pathway actually connects uh, different targets used to treat OCD and may benefit um, the uh, may mediate the the clinical uh, benefit um, on OCD symptoms um, achieved with these various um, targets. Um, The era of connectomic DBS has arrived, and there is um, um, a book um, edited by, uh, by Andreas Horn uh, on connectomic DBS, um, uh, trying to address uh, questions such as to which cortical areas should DBS uh, be connected to generate the highest clinical benefit or to um, reduce uh, side effects um, or to provide um, a better understanding of mechanisms of action of DBS. Um, can DBS be tailored to individual patients and um, uh, produce personalized treatment? Um, and uh, could the um, connectomic DBS be used to enhance on our understanding of the behavioral effects of DBS similar to uh, what I showed you for Parkinson's disease? Um, finally, uh,
I would also like to acknowledge the help uh, and contributions of my colleagues at uh, the Unit of Functional Neurosurgery um, at um, UCL Queen Square Institute of Neurology, and particularly the fellows who um, completed um, the studies that I uh, reported, um, and um, colleagues at the Hammersmith Hospital, uh, where some of the imaging work was done, and colleagues in Spain, where some of the local field potential work was done, and sources of funding from the National Institute of um, Health in um, the US, the Wellcome Trust, Brain Research Trust, Parkinson's UK, and Fundación Caja Madrid. Thank you for listening.